Ariel, so we're going to continue talking about World War II, and specifically what we're going to be looking at in this section of notes is the U.S. joining the war. Now, we know that initially the U.S. Um, isn't going to get involved in the war, but we are definitely uh, throwing our support in favor of the Allied powers. We're lending uh, military resources, bases, weapons um, to the Allies, and um, definitely showing our, our support support for them. Um, we're no longer trading with Japan. We're telling um, oil companies to cease their trading with Japan as well. Um, so definitely um, showing that we are opposed to the Axis powers and in support of the Allied powers. Now on December 7th of 1941, everything's going to change. Uh, Japan is going to launch a major offensive against the United States um, that's going to be at our naval base in Pearl Harbor, Hawaii which uh, at this point in time, Hawaii is actually not a state yet. It's still a U.S. territory. And this naval base uh, at Pearl Harbor in Hawaii, um, while it was the target of this attack for the sailors that were stationed there, um, they really did not think this was a possibility. Um, pretty much all the fighting in World War II is happening in Europe, which is thousands of miles away on the other end of the globe. Um, and basically people that were stationed at Pearl Harbor really did not expect an attack to happen um, there. So when this attack does happen, it's actually going to come in three waves. Um, and the U.S. military did um, have a, a slight bit of warning that the uh, Japanese were going to attack. But by the time uh, that warning reached Pearl Harbor and they uh, had basically any sort of opportunity to respond to it, it was already too late. Um, after this attack happens, FDR is going to give a speech to Congress um, referring to this attack as a day which will live in infamy and encouraging Congress to declare war on uh, Japan and on Germany. And this uh, declaration of war after the Pearl Harbor attack is officially going to enter the U.S. into the war on the Allied side. Now, as far as um, this attack goes, this is going to also launch the beginning of um, what we call the Pacific Theater of the War. So the European theater is all the fighting that was happening in Europe. The Pacific Theater is the fighting that's happening in the Pacific Ocean. Now, um, immediately after the Pearl Harbor attack, which most of the deaths um, from Pearl Harbor are going to happen on the USS Arizona, um, which was the, the ship you saw on that last slide, um, which completely sunk and still is actually sitting um, on the floor of the ocean in the harbor today. Um, but the, the um, deaths from that particular attack are going to motivate the U.S. Uh, to want to get back at the Japanese. So from December of 1941 through uh, January of 1942, the Japanese are continuing to attack the United States. They attack the Philippines, um, and the U.S. is trying to, to basically prevent uh, the Japanese from taking over control of all of our, our different territories in the Pacific. Um, now, the soldiers that are going to be captured um, by the Japanese in the Philippines are going to be led um, on what becomes known as the Bataan Death March, which... Um, this is going to be one of the, the more gruesome aspects um, of the war. But the Japanese soldiers that the U.S. is fighting against um, are seen uh, as sort of uh, ruthless, and they're willing to do anything uh, to be victorious in this war. Um, at Pearl Harbor, there were kamikaze pilots um, that would cause a lot of damage because they would fly their planes directly into their targets, um, in particular the Japanese planes, the Japanese Zeros, were very fast. They could fly low to the ground, um, which during the Pearl Harbor attack, this is going to be especially devastating because um, the harbor is very shallow. So people didn't really think that a, a realistic aerial attack could happen, um, but the Japanese Zeros are able to fly so low to the ground that they launch torpedo attacks um, that are able to, to get to those ships in the harbor. Um, and then uh, as the later waves of attacks come, which I mentioned this was uh, planned to be a three-wave attack, um, the first wave does a, a significant amount of damage. The second wave 
um, is then where we see some of those kamikaze pilots coming in and, and continuing to do damage. Um, but that third wave was actually called off. They called off the third wave because at that point, um, the U.S. response, they had a little bit of time to actually be able to respond to the attack. Um, and they were, were able to get some planes in the air um, to combat the Japanese attack. So that third wave of planes was actually called off, which was very lucky for the United States because about half of our fleet um, at Pearl Harbor was actually out um, on a training exercise. It was a Sunday morning, so they actually weren't in the harbor. If that third wave of planes had uh, actually taken place, they probably would have uh, come into contact with that other half of our fleet um, and would have would have done some significant damage there as well. Um, so while the U.S. fleet is um, definitely taken off guard and we're definitely um, have a, a high number of losses, over 2,000 losses from that attack, um, and then obviously with the attack on the Philippines as well, it's not looking very good for the U.S., um, but continuing forward, we will see that this uh, doesn't cause a ton of uh, long-term setbacks for the U.S. military. We see that in the spring of 1942, we are going to launch the Doolittle Raid, which was a raid specifically planned um, to get back at the Japanese for this uh, the Pearl Harbor attack. The surprise aerial attack on Tokyo um, was specifically uh, aimed at uh, trying to have a, a swift attack that uh, basically would catch the Japanese off guard the same way that um, the Pearl Harbor attack caught the U.S. off guard. While the Japanese do um, end up suspecting that this attack is coming, uh, the U.S. does figure out a whole lot of things uh, in the process of planning this attack. They're able to plan uh, having bombers take off of an aircraft carrier, which is going to be um, pretty significant because at this point in time, um, nobody had really done that before because bombers are significantly heavier than typical um fighter jets that you would have taking off from an aircraft carrier. So they actually only had enough gas on board of those bombers um, to get them to Japan. They wouldn't have actually been able to fly back um, to the aircraft carrier. They didn't have enough gas on board because it was too heavy. Um, now, as far as this, uh, this attack goes, it is going to be swift. They are going to have minimal, uh, minimal casualties on the American side. Um, and this is going to help boost morale for the American people. And the, the Japanese are sort of shown, hey, we can do this kind of attack on you just the same as you did it to us. Now, uh, after the Doolittle Raid, we do see that the U.S. is going to kind of shift its focus uh, more toward Europe because they realize, yes, we, we got back at the Japanese. The Japanese are the ones that brought us into this war. They do realize, though, um, that the war in Europe has been uh, waging on for three years now, and the U.S. Um, needs to help out the other allies to finish the war in Europe first, and then after that's over, then we can focus our resources um, on Japan. 